episode 1003, How to Step into Your Vision. It's time to train for life and love your journey. In this episode of Create Your Now, Your Best Selfie, you'll learn new ways to rediscover, rejuvenate, and renew your mind, body, and spirit. Please welcome your host, certified life coach, personal trainer, and nutritionist, Christiane Wargo. Staring at a stop sign, watching people drive by. Happy, happy day. I hope you're ready for a spectacular week, a fabulous one. Yes, get your head set, your mindset ready, saying, you know what? Nothing is impossible. It is Mindset Monday, and we're talking about how to step into your vision. It's going to be fun. You're going to want to dive deep. Let's get on our swim gear. For those of you who are brand new to Create You Now, welcome to this incredible family. I'm so delighted of your presence. If you already haven't had the opportunity, you'll want to head on over to createyournow.com where you can learn more and sign up for the Kisses newsletter. They keep it simple strategy, everyday solutions to live, love, and impact. A visionless life leaves us trapped in our circumstances. So we have to talk and learn how to step into our vision. You may have an idea of what your vision is, or you may be doing everything to run away from your vision. If you believe that you were created on purpose for a purpose, then God has a vision for your life. It's up to you to open your mind to seeing that vision. Are you ready? Some of us aren't. So that's why we've got to dig a little bit deeper. There are some things that can get in the way of you stepping into your vision. So let's take a look first at those obstacles. Number one, you got to get out of your own way. Stop tripping all over yourself, trying to control every twist and turn. It's not up to you to choreograph your life's dance. Let God lead the way. That's what he's here for. He knows better than any of us. So get out of your own way. Stop overthinking. We do it too often. Number two, give up the entitlement mentality or the philosophy. Now, I like to think of it sometimes more as a philosophy because in our generations that are up and coming now, this thing of, well, I should have all already. You know, I need to have a phone by the time I'm in second grade. I need a tablet by the time I'm two days old. I mean, seriously, I know this sounds crazy, but when you talk to the generations that are up and coming, that's all they know, that this is how it's supposed to be. I should already be driving my Mercedes Benz at the age of 21. Uh, Really? Maybe if you're a really awesome entrepreneur and you happen to stumble upon a few things, but otherwise it takes some strikes against you right? Because you got to learn your way through life. But we grow up thinking it's an entitlement. So it's not just a mentality anymore. It's a philosophy. So you got to give that up because ouch, this one hurts. A vision doesn't come without pain and challenges. Look at the vision God had here on earth when he sent his son, Jesus Christ. Do you think it was easy for Jesus to walk, to be human as one of us, to feel like we feel? That just means that he knows us that much more intimately than what we really think. I mean, that really grounds me when I think that God sent his son to know who we are, to be who we are. And I'm sure at times Jesus was probably pretty frustrated with us. Come on now. Don't you know who I am? You should bow before me. I am the almighty. I'm the alpha and the omega. But a vision doesn't come without pain and challenges. Number three, you have to overcome the victim mindset. Whoa. Stop replaying and rehashing all of the should haves, all of the could haves, all of the would haves. You have the capability to achieve the vision if you're willing to leave the victim behind. And what does that really mean? The past. You can't sit here and say, oh, but... It should have gone this way. And if it just would have gone this way, then I wouldn't be where I am now. That's a victim mindset. That only keeps you down in the ditches. And that's not a safe place to be when the tornadoes come. No, siree. Your past does not define whom you're becoming if you live as a visionary. So if you're living as a visionary, if you say I'm a visionary, that means you've already said my past does not define me. It may help to refine you, but it doesn't define you. 
This is forward thinking, letting go of what you cannot change and understanding your value. John C. Maxwell says this, a minute of thought is greater than an hour of talk. You and I do a lot of talking, talking ourselves right out of our own worth. We fail at a goal we set. We fail at a New Year's resolution. We fail at our marriage. We fail at raising a child for their actions. We fail at even doing, just getting maybe some errands run. We forget things at the grocery store. We fail. We're not worth it. Oh boy, do we talk ourselves right out of our own worth all the time. We minimize who we are. We minimize our worth. When you minimize You are concealing your vision. How much do you think you're really worth right now? Do you say, I'm amazing. And I'm not saying this is prideful. I'm saying being heartfelt and honest with yourself here. Because most of us don't think we're amazing. We're sitting there in the ditches hoping that when the storm comes and the challenges hit that, yeah, maybe we'll be safe. Oh, but wait, we still want to be able to escape so we can still go do what we really want to do in life. When you minimize, you're concealing your vision. But at the same time, you know that you were created on purpose for a purpose, so therefore God has a plan for you. And that plan is a vision. So how do you step into your vision? Here is your kiss, the keep it simple strategy. Fix your mind on your vision. You're like, wait, but I don't know the vision. Hold on here. We got to do little baby steps here. We're planning a foundation. That's what we're doing. We got to build on the foundation. We were talking yesterday even that God has a plan for your life. Go back and listen to episode 1002. What commands your attention? If you haven't listened to that episode, go back and listen to it. Because there we talk about, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Now, when you fix your mind on your vision, what does that really look like? Well, let's break it down. Number one, I already gave it to you. Let God lead the way. He knows best. We don't. He does. He's got it all worked out. Let God lead the way. Number two, allow the doors to open and close. This includes your ideas and your thoughts and your perspectives. Just because you've been working on something doesn't mean that that's what you're supposed to be doing right now. It could be just a stepping stone. I can hear you right now rattling in your head. Oh my gosh, I've been working on this project, this business I want to get off on the ground. I've been working on losing weight. I've been working on my marriage. And, you know, I just, I feel like this is the direction I'm supposed to be going. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. I've been working towards this, maybe for months, maybe for years. And now you're telling me maybe I'm not supposed to be going that way? Yes, I am. But you have to allow the doors to open and close. Sometimes when doors close, what do we try to do? Oh, we try and run up against that brick wall and we try to bang them down and bang them down. Is that really helpful? We need to learn from our brick walls and then look for the open doors, the peekaboo, the little cracks in the windows and seeing maybe that's where we're supposed to be. Because I promise you, God is going to show you You have to let God lead the way and then allow the doors to open and close. And number three, take aim on his plan. His plan is perfect, not your plan. That means you have to let go. No more control. You have to surrender. And surrender is hard. It's so hard. That means you're giving up what? Control. And as a human being, that's what we love. Besides love itself, we truly indulge in control. We want to know what's coming next. We want to plan for our future, whether it's our finances, our marriage. We have dreams and we try to say, okay, I want to be able to earn this much money when I get out of college. And then after that, I want to be able to get married. And then I want to start to have a family. And then I want to be able to have my dream home at this point. We try to plan everything out. 
And if you look at it, our society does the same thing. It tells us you should have a plan. And I'm not saying you shouldn't plan. Don't go down that street with me. Yes, you need to have a plan for finances. You need to have your eyes wide open. But the thing is, is when we're trying to control every single step, we're missing the boat that God has sitting right next to us. And he's trying to get you back on track. Take aim on his plan, not yours. His plan is perfect. Maybe you want some help with this. It's not easy trying to figure this stuff out on your own. You need a sounding board. You need a coach. You need someone who is a little bit removed from your specific situation. Someone who's not emotionally attached. Because when we involve emotions, oh, that raises the stakes to a whole new level. You want to know how to step into your vision? Click on the link, take aim in the show notes. I have a free gift for you. It's a coaching call with me. When you click on that link, a little form pops up. That begins our conversation. We will get you scheduled for an actual call. Now remember, sometimes when I get back in touch with you, it may go into your spam folder. So always go looking in your spam or junk folder. Many times I've had people say, oh, Christiane, you were sitting in there for weeks. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, that's okay. Not a big deal. If that happens, we go ahead. We, I make room for you. Okay. It's my way to serve you right where you're at. So click on the link, take aim. You can step into your vision, but you have to understand whose foundation you're building it on. Is it God's or is it yours? Don't let your distractions lead you to a visionless life, leaving you trapped in your circumstances. Your focus is not on your vision. Your focus is fixed on God who reveals your vision. I love you so very much. I cannot wait to see you on the other side. Blessings, hugs, and lots and lots of love. We'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye. Feeling inspired, ready to train for life, and love your journey? Visit createyournow.com for more incredible resources to help you along the way. We'll see you next time on Create Your Now, Your Best Selfie. And remember, always be sure you consult your physician before beginning any health and fitness plan.